Good morning. Welcome to New Haven Baptist Church this morning. Great to see everyone with us. Lord certainly made it a beautiful day inside. As you can see, lots of work went into yesterday. Lots of decorating around here. Uh, excellent work. Uh, God certainly making a place for us to worship together uh, that we can enjoy and have a good time uh, and also praise and honor Him. A few announcements, and let me give you a couple of real important announcements this evening. Six o'clock, we will be worshiping together with Black Oak Baptist Church down at, at Black Oak, which is just about a mile down the road. Brother James will be preaching down there, so come out. Uh, let's be part of that. Let's have a great time together. Uh, the Lord certainly encircles us and gives us an opportunity to come together and let's share with one another. Also, Wednesday evening, we will not have service here, so don't forget that. Wednesday evening, we will not have service uh, here at New Haven Baptist Church. Don't forget, uh, lots of great things that are coming up. Children's play practice, children to be part of the Christmas parade. All those things are in your bulletin. One thing I really want to mention is 684 shoe boxes went through these doors and headed out for Operation Christmas Child. That is the Lord's blessing to us that we're willing to share forward. So uh, let's continue to pray for those as they go out. Uh, great things will happen with those if we'll just put a little bit of prayer behind it. I'll ask that our ushers come this morning, uh, that we receive this morning's offering. Now I ask that you pray with me this morning. Father, we're so thankful, so blessed, so great to know that we have you to take care of us and continue blessing us and giving us an opportunity to gather together and worship. Father, we pray today that you'll be in this service, that you'll use it in a mighty way, that you'll keep it in our hearts as we go out these doors, that we'll share it with others and live on your path of righteousness. Father, I pray today for our pastor as you continue to strengthen and encourage him Keep the devil at bay from him, Father, that he'll continue strong in your word and leading us here at New Haven. Father, I pray for us as a church that we'll continue to seek after you, together in one accord, doing what you have us to do in all things. Now, Father, today I pray for those that are unable to be with us due to sickness. Be with them, heal them, that they may come and worship together. See them through difficult times. Father, others that need you in their life, I pray for them, that you'll encircle them with love. Use us as your hands, your feet, your mouthpiece to strengthen and encourage through difficult times there. Now, Father, I pray today that this service will be mighty, will be great, will be uplifting, and most of all, Father, that we'll show honor and glory to thee. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
I think I said this last time we sung that song, but I, I think, you know, I've been sorry for a lot of things in my life. But I'll tell you one thing I've never been sorry for. Hallelujah. I've never been sorry I accepted Jesus. How about you? Let's all stand up. Turn around. Let's welcome each other. Let's worship together today. sing there's power in the blood would you be free from your burden of sin there's power in the blood power in the blood would you or evil a victory win there's wonderful power in the blood Calvary's time, there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the believe it do you believe there's power do you believe it folks there's that's the most power that there is 
is the power, the blood of the Lamb Amen. that saves the world, those that will call on Him. If you don't know Him today, today, now is the accepted time. Yes. Now is the day. Today is the day. Yes. Let's sing that last chorus like we really mean it. How about this? Let's sing it. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Sing this with me. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome. Hallelujah. Y'all sound great this morning. Last verse, Greg. Let's do that last verse. When Christ shall come. Oh, that sounds good. We shall morning what ain't it pretty around here amen we had people working hard uh, we've had people here actually for two or three days now I know uh, and and not to name everybody but I know uh, Miss Carol's been here working nonstop even John's been here working nonstop <laughs> Ooh, Red Sea miracles amen never ceases no he listen he, he's, she, amen, smart man. He does exactly what she says do. 
Amen. Miss Doris has been here working a lot. I know Miss Tina Bilbrey's been here working. And listen, as great as it looks, there's still work to be done, believe that or not. Uh, the fellowship hall, we're working down there. Got a few things still got to be done up here. And if you can give some time throughout the week, maybe you couldn't be here on Saturday. Maybe you can't be here in the morning. Maybe you can come in the evening. If you'll let us know, we'll try to work it into where we've got something for you to do. If you can come and help out a little bit, um, that'll be good. We still got a little decorating to do. So if you'll get with me or Miss Doris or um, somebody and let us know. But, man, I looked at that tree and I thought, man, that thing is beautiful. Amen. Amen. I, you know what? I think these ladies deserve a hand, don't you? And John. Amen. Amen. Uh, Y'all just remember how beautiful it is when the bills start coming in. Amen. It's a joke. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> oh, these folk over here are really lucky because, well, we won't go there. Amen. We've got the view cut off. Hey, listen, don't forget um, tonight. Please be a part of that. I'm excited about being able to go down, uh, just down the road a little ways to Black Oak and being able to, to share with the folks there uh, for a while. I'm excited about it. Been studying real hard, been praying even harder. Uh, I'd love for our church to have a good show, and mainly because if we don't, I'm going to look really bad. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Uh, I, listen, I want us to go and make much of Jesus, amen. That's my only goal, and that's what I told Brother Kyle. Listen, I'm not coming to be seen or even heard. Uh, I hope that I can just go and be uh, a window that people can see Jesus. That's all I want to do and be an encouragement. So you be much in prayer about that. First Kings chapter 17, turn there with me real quick like. We've got another baptism today, praise the Lord. We just, uh, I like to keep that baptistry running, man, keep that thing full. So, um, however, if you need to be baptized, uh, you'll want to do it today because we probably won't do it again until after first of the year because we're going to be using that for some of the decorations and things unless you want to go to the creek, and I'll go dunk you there. I don't care a bit. Um, uh, if we have to break ice, that's on you. I'll have on waiters. Amen. Uh, but we'll, we'll try to get you in there. All right. Hey, you know something? There's something we all have in common, <laughs> every one of us. Doesn't matter. We have something in common. We all have and have had and or will have needs amen? amen all of us do that's that's one that is a leveler uh, is need need is a leveler and i want to talk to you about that because uh i really want to talk to you I, I started a little series here i guess you can tell on on can god really do what he says he'll do here's my god can uh, i'm gonna take it on stage because i really want you to see jesus through <laughs> the can I could have picked a lighter when I, I think about that every time I pick that up. Uh, and I try to make it not look like I'm straining, but it's really hard. <laughs> That's how we do as Christians sometimes, though, right? I believe God can <laughs> drag that thing along. I really believe he can. Can God really bless me and my family? God can. And uh, I kind of want to continue along that theme. Can God really build our church I believe God can can God really revive our nation I believe God can but I think it starts with us individually believing that God can meet all of our needs we have a great story here you know it well first Kings 17 verse number one and Elijah the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead Said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Shirith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Chirith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, where, which belongeth to Zidon, or Sidon, and dwell there, behold, I've commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. 
And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, I like that word, don't you? She was going to fetch it. He called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a curse. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. <laughs> That's pretty depressing, huh? Listen, I got one meal. Uh, I'm going to go fix it. And then, uh, and then we're going to eat it and then we're going to lay down and die. Really encouraging to the preacher, isn't she? Oh, my goodness. And Elijah said to her, don't, don't be afraid or fear not. Because uh, I want you to go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first to bring it unto me. And after, make for thy son and for, for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the curse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth the rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the curse of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, thou hast also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slander, son. And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again. And he revived, and Elijah took the child brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth. That common element that unites all the people of the world, that one thing we have in common, every person in this room, this idea of needs there will be times in every one of our lives when we're going to experience some type of need. It could be material in nature. Uh, that seems to be where we focus a lot of our att attention is on material needs. It could be uh, that uh, we have emotional needs. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, we'll have physical needs and spiritual needs. Uh, our lives will need spiritual things in nature, and, and there's a lot of things we'll need, and when we need, uh, we all probably do about the same things. A lot of times we do exactly what the Bible tells us not to do. We what? We worry, don't we? Amen. You don't have to raise your hand, but am I the only worry wart here today? I say not. Amen. We worry we all have that in common as well. When we have a need, when we, listen to me, when we have the power, when it's within our power to help ourselves, then we really don't have a need. What I'm referring to is when there are those times when we've reached the end of the line. Amen. I have needs sometimes that I'm able to meet myself, and if I'm able to meet it really and truly, that's not a true need. A lot of times it's called a want. I'm not talking about our wants. I'm not talking about that which we're able to take care of ourselves. I'm talking about the greatest needs in our life. I'm referring to those times when we're at the end of the rope. We've done everything that we know to do to meet our own need. We've exhausted every resource, and we're left with the reality of our own inability that stares us right in the face. What? Some of y'all may be there today. What do you do then? Now, I'm going to assume that most everybody here is a Christian. But I'll promise you in this crowd of Christians, and you don't have to hold your head down, you need to look up. We have reached a place to where we just don't know. We know all the answers, right? God will provide. We know all of that. But deep down, there's still something there in the pit of your stomach, the enemy, 
throws up and creates a little bit of doubt to where it's going to be answered or answered in a way that you think is fitting for you. When you lay down at night and you're having your prayers and you're saying, I believe God, and all the time you really do want to believe God, you believe God can, but there's that one little ounce of doubt. We all have it. We can pretend like it's not there. We know it's there. That's what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about that 0.01% that might be stuck there, that the enemy places there, just to throw us off. But what if God doesn't? Can I just say this to you? If God doesn't, is no reflection on him, and it doesn't mean that he can't. <laughs> because he can. Period. I, I like this scripture that we see here. See, I don't think the answer is simple. I think it's deeply profound. I think the answer is given by the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And his answer to getting the needs of life met was this. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Four little words. Have faith in God. <laughs> there they are. All I'm saying, and what I hopefully intend to show from this passage is that we have a God in heaven who can be trusted with the things that I need most. God can meet every possible need that I have. I want you to I, listen. I, today, I'm not fishing for amens or hallelujahs. Today, I want to help you because I've sat where you've sat, where you're sitting, and heard the man of God proclaim the gospel and said amen and raised my hand and not have it, just, just not grab a hold of it. Listen, I'd rather for you to, to, to give me attaboys and act like everything's good. I'd rather you let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit wants to do in you today, and that's to convince you through the power of the Holy Ghost that God can do everything he promised he would do. <laughs> If we ever get across that little bitty hump to where we're trying to make everybody believe that we're okay, if we ever get over that hump, we'll really be okay. But I believe God can. He can point it out. He can fix it. <laughs> can God really meet your need? God can. Let me show you in this chapter why I say just with this, and there's a million other places today, literally, that we could go. But I love this story. It's one of my favorite stories here because the first thing that we see here is we see the many sides of our needs. Uh, a lot of times our need arises from strange and varied sources. And there's three mentioned here in this chapter. And that's why I read the whole chapter. There's, uh, uh, you and I, we may have needs, but our needs may not be the same. And to some of us, it may be very un common if you will the many sides of our needs and that's the first one this this is an uncommon service verses one through seven why did elijah's need arise do anybody know that why did this need even become manifest i want you to tell you how how uh a little unusual this is the reason that elijah's in need here write this down is because Elijah was being obedient to the voice of God. Now that cuts against some Baptist grain because we Baptists like to tell people all the time, uh, kind of like Job's buddies, don't we? Well, the reason that this is going on in your life is there has to be sin in your life. Amen? You ever had a preacher tell you that? Oh, it just blesses you so good. You go to your pastor broken and beaten and battered, and the first thing he says, well... Dear brother or sister, do you, is there sin in your life? <laughs> because that's an easy answer, right? Well, the reason that, uh, you know, God's mad at you. And he's waiting to beat you over the head with the 1611 King James Bible. So, but that's not always the case, is it? Listen, Elijah's need arose. This is kind of unusual. <laughs> because, look at this. It came because of his obedience to the will of God. He was just doing what he was told to do. And then, 
look at this, the need arose. Just because he was doing what he was supposed to do. Stay with me here. <laughs> there are times when you seem to be doing everything just like you're supposed to be doing it. You're paying your tithe, you're going to church, you're living right, and the troubles and the problems that plague your life, they just keep coming. And it takes us by surprise, but why? Jesus said it'd be this way in John chapter 16. Whoever got people to believe in that once we came to Jesus for salvation, all of our troubles were behind us, pulled off the greatest lie of the ages. That's a true statement, church. That's truth. Jesus tells us just the, just the opposite. The truth of the matter is we can expect a life to a time filled with trouble. Job 14.1 tells us instead of standing around with our mouth hanging open and trouble comes, we're supposed to, what's First Peter tell us? To rejoice. <laughs> Isn't that something? How can I rejoice, Pastor James? Well, if you truly believe that God can, if I truly believe that God can, even in the midst of trouble and need, and I believe God can, I can still rejoice. Sometimes the, the need is an uncommon service. And then in verses 9 through 12, we see an uncontrollable situation. These verses reveal a widow woman who was suffering need because of the wrongdoing of others. Because the sin of Ahab and Jezebel, the nation of Israel, God sent a drought. and It affected the area where this widow lived and she was just caught up in an unfortunate situation. Sometimes the reason that we have a need is because we're just doing what God called us to do. I wish I had, I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody showed up and said, Preacher, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm praying. You ever felt like that? I'm reading my Bible, Preacher. I'm in the Word of God. I'm giving my time and my tithe. and Man, I'm working in the church, Preacher. Why is God doing this to me? Huh? You ever been there? Man, I have more times than I can count. I'm doing everything. Listen to me. This is not because of some great sin. And then other times it's because of an uncontrollable. Sometimes folks put us in places. <laughs> now you can act self-righteous if you want to, but if you've got kids, you know what I'm talking about. Say amen right there. <clears throat> We're doing everything God trained. We've got kids meaner than the devil. Say amen again. <laughs> them little brats, I tell you the truth. Now, I'm talking about them It's 20 and 30 year old. Amen. When they're below 18, you can do something about that. They get a little older, it gets a little tougher. Oh, I figured Brett would be shouting by this time. Amen. I wish the rest of them were here. His sisters was ten times more trouble than him. But anyway, I digress. I tell people, man, girls are... Girls are, boys are a whole lot easier to raise. They're a whole lot harder to keep alive, but they're a whole lot easier to raise. Amen. <laughs> and if you're raising kids, you're going to, you're serving the Lord, man. You got your buddies, right? Your friends, you got your, your inner circle down, and God's blessed you, and you finally got enough money where you can go out and eat a steak if you want to. Amen. Without having to buy diapers and formula and paying for school trips and books and Y'all with me, amen. God's been so good and everything's going good. And all of a sudden, them little rascals <laughs> decide to do something stupid. Give me a witness here. Amen. Yeah, come on, preacher. Some of y'all going to learn something today, whether you want to or not. And everything goes south. God, what are you doing? Listen to me. You're in a mess. But you're in a mess under no fault of your own. You're in a mess because the devil's a liar and a thief and a joy killer. And he come to seek and destroy all that God wants to do for us. Listen to me. Sometimes this uncommon need comes from an uncontrollable situation. Sometimes it comes from an untimely sorrow. But we shouldn't be surprised when things take a turn in that direction. Because, listen, if it could happen to faithful, holy Job, then it could happen to any person in this room. Amen. Amen. Bottom line is our troubles have got a way of overtaking us when we're not expecting them. They sneak up on us and, man, they body slam us. They leave us dazed. They leave us 
hurting and confused. And boy, I praise the Lord today that our troubles don't have the last word. Amen. There's a lot of sides to our needs that come along. And it could be from uh, an uncontrollable situation. It could be from an untimely sorrow. (laughs) This woman's given a lot to the Lord. She's given all she had. And she's received much from the Lord, but she's thrown into a time of grief over an untimely death of her only son. Her world, which seemed to be on track, was derailed, and she was filled with sorrow and pain. You ever been there? Just when it seemed like things couldn't get any better, and all of a sudden the tank, the bottom just falls out. Why are you telling us all this, preacher? Help us here. I'm telling you this to to encourage you that you're not alone. (laughs) We all go through these times of discouragement and disillusionment and, and, and we need to understand that even though we're going through these times it doesn't change the character of God God can help you in this time I want to move along here we see the many sides of our needs number two we see the manifest supply of our God amen I love this part you see, our need may have caught us off guard. It may have left us standing with our chin on our chest wondering what happened. But, but listen to me, our little old trial, I, this is the most encouragement that I ever give myself, is it didn't catch God off guard. Isn't that good? I may not understand it. I may not have been ready for it. I may not, but God, I like that, don't you? God knew it was coming long before it ever got to me. Praise God. And I'm going to move along because I'm going to give away the whole message if I don't. Because I just want to shout and holler and run the pews and, and act like a, like a charismatic. Amen. Because I've been through this sermon numerous times and I figured something out. God was not caught off guard by what came about in my life. He knew what was going on and and listen, he knew it from the foundation of the world and maybe even maybe he could have helped orchestrate this event in my life to help me to become more like him. (laughs) Boy, that's good, ain't it? Maybe, just maybe, since God knew about it and since God may have had a hand in it, you ever thought about this? If he knew about it, and if he had a hand in it, oh, here's a blessing, then he's already made preparation <laughs> Ooh, to help you. Isn't that good? If he already knew about it, and maybe he had a hand in it, yeah, don't you think that maybe, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> that he's made some preparation for it? You see, our need is merely the evidence of God's supply for us in waiting. You mean to say that again? <laughs> My need <laughs> is just merely <laughs> in waiting. Because God, who says, I will supply all your needs, <laughs> it's already been supplied. It's just a matter waiting on the Lord listen to me look at God's past preparations I love verse 3 and 4 when I read it I just about give it away and shouted a little bit there think about this where did he send Elijah to go near what near a brook didn't he thousands of years maybe hundreds of years maybe two years maybe the day before maybe I doubt that think about this before Elijah needed a drink of that cool, clear water. The finger of God had already traced that baby out. Say amen right there. Before he, mm, 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 mm. Before he ever needed a drink, God had already made a brook. Amen. Praise God for that preparation. Listen to me. God knew that his servant would need provision, and God made a way long before the need ever arose. (laughs) The name of that brook is the word that means cutting. (laughs) Isn't it good to know that God cut Elijah's thirst before he ever got thirsty? (laughs) Wow. 
isn't it great to know listen to me what a thought if I bring that up to this day if God knows all about my trouble before they come and if God may have a hand in my trouble I love Isaiah 45 7 what a great great scripture look at this Isaiah 45 7 here's what he said I form the light and create darkness I make peace and create evil I the Lord do what all these things it is on him listen to me God may have already taken the steps necessary to meet our need before it ever arises and it may seem that the Lord isn't moving or he's just going to leave you there to twist in the breeze but the truth is this that God has already met our need before the need ever arose now Reverend Roberts that's a prosperity gospel you call it what you want to because I, I really don't care. You tag it what you want to tag it. But I'm going to tell you something. God has already met your need before you even knew that you had a need. That's the God that we're serving. Wow. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Psalms 84.11 did you, did you get that? Wow. Nowhere in God's past provision more clearly seen than in the area of our salvation. What happened? Before God created man, <laughs> before God laid the mud seals of this planet, God the Father and God the Son got together and they made a plan for this creature that's not even yet invented before God flung the first star out think about that before God cut the oceans before God done anything God was making provision for my salvation <laughs> oh my you bunch of Baptist uh -huh. uh, you thought I'm on, you got to see me now before God created this planet, God the Father got with God the Son and said, hey, I'm going to create something, and that something's going to be a mess. I'm going to tell them, don't you do this, and what are they going to do? They're going to go do exactly what I told them not to do. And therefore, it's going to take some blood. But you see, the blood of the goats and the sheep, it won't do. The blood of the dove and the oxen, it's not going to do. It's going to be temporary. So here's what I'm going to need to do. I'm going to need a lamb, a spotless lamb, a perfect lamb. And God the Son said, huh, where are you going to get that at? Already knowing the answer. God the Father said, oh, you know. God the Son said, yeah, I do. <laughs> I'll be your lamb. You want to talk about the provisions of God? Listen, that puts a golf ball in my throat this morning. And I can't stay here long because y'all have to pick me up somewhere. Because that makes me want to shout like an old-timey Baptist. Amen. Listen to me. To know that God made provisions for me before he laid the first seal to this planet does something inside my soul. That God, before time was even time, that God said, I've got to help James. He's going to need a way. And the only way is through the blood of the spotless lamb. And Jesus said, I'll be that lamb. And the plan worked to perfection. Amen. Praise God for that, church. That it worked. If you're saved today, it's because of God's provision. So don't you tell me that God can't meet your need. Oh, listen to me. What a God, the manifest supply of our God in past preparation. And then in the present supply, we see Elijah being fed by ravens. <laughs> God knew he needed to eat. He supplied the necessities of life for this man of God. Look at the message. Whereas sometimes they're miraculous and ordinary in that God used this common fowl of the air to get his will done. Wow. <laughs> what a God. Listen to me. Did God get you up this morning and say amen? amen? 
Amen. Most of us got to what? Get ourselves dressed. I, one of my best buddies, I may have told you this, was a, was a uh, many did um, uh, oral surgery. I, I knew, used to know that. It's some kind of honest. <laughs> Orth, not an orthodontist, but on a donus, in the dentist, something like that. <laughs> he just wasn't a prima donna. Anyway, uh, <laughs> man, this guy, brilliant young doctor, making bukus of money, lived in a big house, whole nine yards. Went to Spartanburg, South Carolina, got in, a, got in an accident riding his dirt bike and became a quadriplegic. The only thing he could feel was the top of his shoulders up to the top of his head, nothing else. He would say to me sometimes, I'd go see him on Saturdays, and he'd say to me, James, you don't know what I would give just to feel the carpet under my feet one more time. You don't know what I'd give to feel my kids wrap their arms around me and give me a hug just one more time. You don't, listen to me, folk. When you start thinking about that, we all, every one of us, praise God that we is able to get up this morning, get ourselves dressed, get ourselves off to church. Amen. You know why? Because of God's present supply of taking care of us. <laughs> God has taken care of us eternally. But God is taking care of us supernaturally right now. Listen, look at God's promise for tomorrow. Elijah's demand and the widow's response. He tells her, huh, don't worry because the Lord's going to give you what you need all the way into the future. That future Man, we can talk about what God did yesterday. We can talk about what God does, is doing today. But we worry about tomorrow. <laughs> I love my wife dearly, and, and I've tried to quit using her in some of my illustrations because I get myself in trouble. I know that's hard for y'all to believe. Um, but she's been saying to me lately, are you borrowing trouble? Because <laughs> I'll say something about, well, Donna, what about this? It makes me so mad when she does it too. She say, hey preacher, that's like saying, you ain't supposed to be doing this because you're supposed to be leading me, big boy. <laughs> that's kind of like when you're, never mind. Hey preacher, are you barring trouble? I've looked at her before and said, don't you say that to me. Be madder and fire because it's the truth, amen. <laughs> you ever heard the old adage, the truth hurts? <laughs> we borrow trouble, say amen right there. We worry, we worry about tomorrow. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? How, preacher, how are we going to, how, is it already 12 o'clock? Holy smoke. <laughs> how are you ever going to finish by 12 o'clock? It's 1158. We worry about things. Listen to me. We borrow trouble from tomorrow. The same God that made provisions for my soul to be saved. The same God that feeding me today will be the same God tomorrow. When I'll need help to get home, I promise you he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. Amen. That, that is the God that we're serving. Can God really meet my needs? God can. Whatever they may be. Let me give you the third and I'm going to quit right here. I want you to see the marvelous secret for getting your need met <laughs> If I could, it's really not a secret, but I can sum it up in one word, and that word would be what? F-A-I-T-H. Faith is the word. Faith, what a word. It's easy to say. But this faith must manifest itself in four quick areas. Look, there must be faith in the will of God. Elijah had just confronted the king of Israel, and now God's sending him into the wilderness. Could you imagine how confusing that might have been? But listen, we've got to learn our place in, the, in, in their faith in the will of God. God. Often God's will and our will are two entirely different animals, but the secret of getting our need met by God is trusting that God knows what's best for our life and to submit ourselves to him. We must be and there must be faith in the will of God. There must be faith in the ways of God. Look at this. Think about how Elijah felt when his brook dried up. The ravens, they quit bringing food. And God comes along and, and sends, him to, sends him into a widow. <laughs> Basically so she could keep him up. Right? Could you imagine showing up at, at a little widow's house here in, here in Oneida, here in Scott County. And she's got a little old 
a cup of, uh, of, of some, some cornmeal, and she's getting ready to go make some bread. And, and after she eats that, she's going to feed half to her son, half to her, and she's going to go curl up in the corner somewhere and die. And all of a sudden, uh, this deadbeat preacher shows up. <laughs> you shouldn't say that. Well, he's just doing what God told him to do. But think about how most people would think, right? I knew this widow lady here had to be godly because she did something. She what? She obeyed. She listened. Preacher shows up and said, hey, go fix me something to eat. All I've got is just a little bit of bread, and I was going to fix it for me and my boy, and then I was going to, I'm going to, you know, we're going to go lay down and die. And Elijah said, hey, do what I'm asking you to do. Go fix me some bread. Most of us would have been like, hey, didn't you hear me, Slick? <laughs> right? Amen? Or maybe it's just me that's been like that. <laughs> be, hey, hey, listen, dude. You need to back off, man. I said, I'm going to go feed my boy, and I'm going to feed me, and I'm going to go lay down and die. You need to scoot along here, little preacher man. Right? I, did you hear what I said? Go fix me something. Wait a minute. No, no. You didn't hear what I said, preacher. I said I've only got one meal. No, no. She didn't. You noticed we didn't see her arguing, did we? What'd she do? How did she know to be obedient? Because she had done been alone with God. Amen. Amen. She knew who he was. I really believe, even though she said to Elijah, I'm going to eat this and lay down and die, I really believe God done the work in her and knew when Elijah showed up, I'm going to do it because you know what? What, if, what have I got to lose, right? Some of y'all are there this morning. What have you got to lose? You've done it. You've tried to do it yourself. You've tried to meet the need. You killed yourself. You can't do it. You get frustrated. You get aggravated at God. You get confused sometimes. I'm sure the man of God was here. But you need to understand something. Helps on the way. <laughs> it's coming. I don't know when it's coming. I don't know how it's coming. But I know this. It's coming. Look here. There has to be faith in the will of God. There has to be faith in the ways of God. I love Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Pull that up if you can for me, guys. Amen. Isaiah 55. Because I want you to read this with me. Verses 8 and 9. I like this because here's what it says. For, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. <laughs> wow. Neither are your ways my ways. Who said this? Saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. <laughs> God, I don't know what you're doing. Anybody ever said that? God, I don't know what you're doing. Amen? Amen? How many have ever said this? God, what are you doing? You're not supposed to question God, right? But we do, don't we? God, what are you doing? Oh, sometimes God says, just trust me. Because I can. Look here. You gotta, you gotta, you, there must be faith in the will of God. There must be faith in the ways of God. There must be faith in the work of God. This widow woman had to have faith in that work. And then finally... There must be faith in the word of God. I love what verse 14 says. Don't miss this. He gives her the promise in the form of a seven-word statement. Here it is. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. <laughs> How do I know? Because I trust God's word. Here's what God's word said. I'll never leave you. Are you with me? And I'll never what? I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. But God, what about? Nope. Listen to me, James. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. But God, what about this? Nope. I'm not going to leave you. I'm <laughs> Preacher, you don't know how big my problem is. Let me tell you something. I don't need to know how big your problem is. But if you have to say that to me here's what I want to say to you you don't know how big my God is <laughs> oh he's big and he can take care of your needs can God preacher you don't know what I'm facing right now I know I don't know but he does and if he knows you can bet he's made a way <laughs> can God can God really preacher oh listen to me God can. I want you to bow your head, close your eyes. I'm going to have our candidate for baptism to come on over to my left here and get ready to. And while we're getting prepared, I want to ask you a question today. Where are you at? 
What in the world's going on in your life that you would like just to say, God, I believe you can. God, I know you can. While we have a, just some music for the invitation as we prepare for this baptism, I'd hate to waste this opportunity to, to get you some help. Maybe you, you, you're wallowing a little bit in self-pity. I don't know. Maybe everything just perfect with you. I don't know. Maybe you've been on the altar 20 times in the last few months. I don't care. If you have a need today, here's what I know. God can help you. God can hook you up today. I promise you. The only thing you've got to do is to get it to him. I know we've run a little bit long today, but church, this is important. I don't know. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. It doesn't matter your, your background. All that matters today is if you need help, God will, God will provide help. He's already made provision. I wonder today, while we wait, if there's one person, just raise your hand up and say, Pastor, God spoke to me today. Would you pray for me anywhere in the building? Preacher, pray for me. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Listen, amen. God knows. Thank you. God sees those hands and God knows that heart. Can God really meet my need? Can God really help me? Yeah, he can. Hmm. Preacher, what if he don't? Oh, it doesn't mean he can't. <laughs> he can help you and he will help you one way or the other. But again, we've got to have faith in his will. We've got to have faith in his word. We've got to have faith in his work. God spoke to you. You need this altar. It's open right now. You can make your way down here. We're going to close in just a minute with a word of prayer. If you have a need. Amen. Thank God for honest hearts. I told you, I know what time it is. You don't have to remind me. But there's folk that have needs in this church. And God can meet their need. And, and you ought to be praying right now. Maybe you don't have a need right now. But I promise you, there's other folk that have needs. We have folk praying right now here that have needs. Christians, you ought to pray. You may be here today and you have the greatest need of all. You've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior. Today's the day of salvation. We heard Brother John quote that already. Now's the accepted time. I wonder if there's one person who raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not even a Christian. Would you just pray for me anywhere in the building? Raise your hand up and down. I'm not going to come to you and embarrass you. I'm going to pray for you. Anywhere at all. Preacher, I'm not a Christian. Pray for me. Anywhere at all. Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for your goodness to us. I'm glad today that you had me here. And you've reminded me all week this week, God, doesn't matter what we're walking through. God, you're able to meet all of our needs. Father, I praise you today. God, I thank you today that you've brought us here. As individuals, I pray we'd remember today in the coming days and the weeks and the month that, God, you are able to send a common bird to drop meat and bread to you, preacher, in a wilderness. God, you're not going to forget about us. You're going to meet all of our needs. I know we got church folk that's walking through some deep waters now, God. Some are financial, some are physical. God, some are emotional, some, God, are spiritual. And they're fighting for their life. God, I lift them up to you right now. And I pray that, God, today you'd settle in their heart that you've not left them and you've not forsaken them. But that, God, through this, you're going to make a way. And when they come out the other side, they're going to look more like Jesus. Pray today, God. Touch those lives. Everyone that raised their hand, those who didn't, those who are praying, whatever the need is, God, I'm glad you know. And you can meet that need. We give it to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Brother John, you got a song ready for us? I'm going to go back here and hit the phone booth and come out like Superman.
Without Him I could do nothing Without Him I'd surely fail Without Him I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? You can't turn him away. Right, amen. I always love it when they get in there. I don't know what. <laughs> amen. Uh, the first response is not spiritual. Usually, it's like, "Oh man, that's warm." <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, it is warm. Amen. I appreciate Mr. White. We've been talking about this for a little while with Mom and Dad, and uh, I've talked to White several times actually, uh, and just the time wasn't right, and. Uh, now the time's gotten right, amen. And uh, Mr. White, you've prayed and asked Jesus to come into your heart, hadn't you, buddy? Amen. And when you asked him, he did, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. So it gives me a great pleasure this morning to baptize this, my brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Got to get him down. There we go. <laughs> amen. <laughs> yes. Amen. I can get him. Whoa, he's stout. We Baptists got to get every hair wetter it don't take. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, well, uh, it's good to be at the house of God. Amen. Ain't God been good to us? Amen. I told the church Wednesday night, and I'm going to go ahead and share it with you real quick. And I know it's 1213 and we're still at church. Oh, the free will's going to beat us to high. Uh, well, anyhow, let's move along. I told the church we, we had a, a big meeting, and, and I ho hopefully got some things to share uh, from the Tennessee Baptist State Convention, and they were talking about baptisms, and um, there was a challenge for churches to baptize 100 next year, and that's one of, the, one of the challenges that they gave, and there wasn't a whole lot of takers there. And um, Man, I, I, I didn't even pray about it. I'm going to be honest with you, but I like a good challenge. Amen. And I said, you know what, fellas, I, I'm going to say New Haven Baptist Church is going to baptize 100 next year. Amen. Amen. So here's what I've done. I've put y'all on the spot. <laughs> uh, you say, preacher, it's going to be hard to win 100. It will be for me. But guess what? Each one of us needs to go get our one. We've talked about it. We've prayed about it. And we've preached about it, church. And that's time to do it. And I'm telling you, if we'll go and we'll present the gospel, God will save 100 and we'll baptize 100. And you'll see God do great things in this church I promise you do I really believe that God can amen. you better believe he can amen father thank you for our time together bless this our congregation God I pray we'd go from here and get our one at all costs whatever it would take God would help win Tennessee for your glory in Jesus name I pray amen and amen I'll see you at Black Oak six o'clock you're at liberty to go